historically the backstory, and therefore the co context of these events looks something like this. Eli, high priest up in Jerusalem. Samuel comes along towards the end of the time, properly God, by the time that Samson was just finishing his time as judge, just as the judge's period was ending. And the lesson of these last, the, the last chapter and these last days of the judges is really pretty stark. Good leaders pass. Good leaders pass away. At the end of chapter 12, it's really pretty stark. There's a list. Jephthah led Israel for six years, the previous major judge. Then he dies, says Judges 12. So. Then the author lists a set of less prominent judges that followed and died, all in rapid succession, giving the impression of the temporary nature of human leadership of the people of God. We tend to lean on our leaders and they go. They die. I'm not planning anything. But that happens, okay? We just see big church down in Cardiff, no good friends gone from there. And you can just see the church reeling at the moment. They're licking their wounds. Because the leadership has gone to the south coast of England to do something else. People lean on leaders and it's time to move on. And in this case, of course, these guys all die. Chapter 12, verse 8. After him, Ibzan of Bethlehem led Israel. After him, Elon the Zebulonite led Israel for ten years. After him, Abdon, son of Hillel from Pirathon, led Israel. Incidentally, that's all being set up for a huge contrast with the 12th judge, who is Samson. Because all those guys were really rich. And Samson is, Samson is a poor area, but from the back end of Dan, you know, they were living in tents. Um, it, says in, in the te it says that he was living in a tent village. The Philistines were raiding the land. They had no settled place, no defence. And, and Samson was living as a, like one of these tent cities for, for, for um, refugees. These guys listed in the run of the Samson incredibly wealthy. Here we go. Ibzan had 30 sons and 30 daughters. He gave his daughters away in marriage, that's 30 dowries, to those outside his clan. And for his sons, he brought in 30 young women as wives from outside his clan. Bright prices to pay. If you're going to fund an operation like that, you need to be fairly wealthy. Especially if you're living in a pastoral, wandering situation. Clearly a bigger mess because he had 30 you know, offspring to think of. Was it 30? Yeah, 30 of each, 30 boys and 30 girls, isn't it? He's been busy. Abdon, on the other hand, another one comes along, very wealthy man. He had 40 sons and 30 grandsons who rode on 70 donkeys. That is quite a fleet to manage. It's a lot of transport in those days. The effect of it all was to paint the picture of Samson being a singular individual. A different sort of character. The final man in Israel's long list of judges, their 12th great tribal leader. No state, just a tribal leader. And he's the guy who leads it. And at a time when leadership in Israel was sporadic, was characterful, was at best quirky, Samson stands out head and shoulders above them all in the oddity stakes. He's weird. It's really weird. And he's God's man for the job. A man is in a league of his own. A league of his own in terms of individuality. And when Bible colleges on this side and that side of the Atlantic all turn out guys in that mould, there are lessons to be learned here about God's use of individual character and individual personality.